totally psyched about this one. What's up guys, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and we're looking at this, which is the new Silent Hero 4. Check it out. I'm psyched about this knife. So let me give you a little background. If you're not familiar, there is a basically a full-sized Silent Hero designed by this same gentleman. His last name is Anton, A-N-T-O-N. -N. Correction, his name is Anton Duplessis or Duplessis. And it's kind of a cool story. I'll put a link down below in the description section so you can go over and check out the Silent Hero and the backstory in that connected to helping to reduce poaching in Africa. And that was a super popular knife um, from Tops, and then they basically have um, come up with a smaller version. So this one, as soon as you pick it up and put it in hand, you're like, yes, that's gonna do the job. For me, I generally want a knife that has chunkier handles, neutral. This one is, I would say probably medium sized handles, but they, it feels so nice in hand. You hold it like this, hold it like this. I mean, as soon as you pick it up, you're like, that's that's how I want a knife to feel. Large size hands for myself. So just to give you a reference point, you got the lanyard slot there, you got that, that it's kind of a, a super wide blade this way, um, but not like overbearing such that it's gonna feel really weak or, or like kind of clumsy as you're using it. Um, but for a knife that compact, it's a wide blade, but just, you can tell immediately, like it's gonna be super usable. Having used hundreds of knives over the years, as soon as I picked this up, I'm like, this one is a keeper and it's going to be used quite a bit for, uh, for me. So let me give you some of the details on the knife and then we'll certainly put it into use. Now look, let me be fair. Um, as a reviewer, when I pick up a knife, I have an immediate sense of, eh, will I keep this, will I not keep it? I have to use it, I have to test it out to see what I actually think about it. But as soon as I pick this up, I think, yeah, this one has a lot of features just in how it feels, the overall build that I think this is gonna be one that I'm, I'm gonna keep and use a lot. But we will put it through the paces, so don't you worry about that. So let me give you the details on it and then we'll put it to use. Uh, both in this video and then I'll have some chance to test it off camera and then I'll come back and let you guys know what I think about the Silent Hero 4. Since it's right here, let's talk about the sheath. So it is Kydex there, nice lock-in, no rattle whatsoever, and you can rock it scout style, which is pretty slick there. Let me double check, these are probably gonna be the pull the dot system. Yes, so if you've never seen these before, there's an extra little lip right there which means that you can only um, remove the the uh, snap in one direction. If you try to pull like sideways, it's not gonna come off, or this sideways, you gotta pull it up, kind of in, in the direction of that little lip. And that makes it lock in extra solid so it's not gonna fall off for you. So that's Kydex. Certainly you could pop, this, pop the um, snaps off if you wanted to, just remove the hardware right there, and then you can, you know, throw it on a pack, you could, you probably could carry it as a neck knife because it's compact enough, but still a little bit big for that. But there's different ways you can certainly rig it up. If you want to get a custom system made, I always recommend Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex to build a custom uh, Kydex system for your knife. All right, 8.88 inches from end to end, 4.25 inches for your actual blade. 0.13 is your thickness for your blade. 1095 high carbon steel, 56 to 58 for your Rockwell hardness. Um, they're calling it a hunter's point as far as the style of the blade. Sniper gray is the color and you've got black micarta handles, nice red liners right there, and six ounces for the weight of the, uh, the knife by itself. So like I said, we're going to put it through the paces in a minute, but let me just offer you some thoughts on it as far as function. Is this a survival knife? Depends, right? So you have under a five inch blade for a lot of people, that's a standard like minimum length for a survival knife. Um, people on the other side say your survival knife is whatever knife you have with you in a survival situation. The cool thing about this one is that it's got some heft and it's chunky enough. I feel like that I could use it for more aggressive purposes, but also, you know, just bushcrafting around camp carving, certainly quite usable in that way. As far as, you know, how it looks right now, you do have some jimping there. You've got, I don't know what they call it. It's like one, two, one, two, three little divots and two, two bumps coming out of the, uh, the um, jimping, and then you've got a larger one here, but your thumb kind of locks in like this. You can also lock it in on the thumb, thumb ramp. I would say this feels more aggressive than this, right? So this feels like it's really digging into my thumb in a, in a way that's gonna grip, whereas this feels like, yeah, you know, as I'm holding it, I can bear down on that without beating my hand up as much. So generally, Tops doesn't have 90 degree angles on their spine, that has to do with their heat treatment, um, but in a survival situation, as I've heard Craig say from Tops in the past, if you're really in a survival situation, use part of your blade to strike your ferro rod or your fire steel to get a to get a fire going. All right, let's do some basic cutting tasks here. Have some uh, some webbing. 
So this is just one fold over, but let's see. Yep, comes nice and sharp, got a little bit of a fray there, but let's double it up here and see if that is any more challenging. Now, one of the challenges is gonna be because you don't have a massively long blade, you know, your length of pull is limited. So you really do wanna bear down on it when you slice and it definitely gets through it. So that's two, let me see if I can do three here. One, two, three. There's three folds over, bear down on it, cuts through it nicely. All right, got some rope here. This is that kind of coated rope, or it's basically got a slick kind of coating on it. A lot of people use this for things having to do with the you know water sports. So it cuts through that nice. Let's go, let's just go right to three, three times over there. One, two, three. Line the blade up. Show you. Yep, got through those three. Let's do four just for kick, see what happens. One, two, three, four. See how this works. Line it up. There's four. Yep, got through that just fine as well. So, I mean, as you would expect, it's going to just slice through cordage nicely. So I just limbed this uh, little branch, just kind of chopping like this, and got the little extra side branches off. Let's uh, do a little carving here. I will tell you, because my I do have that little wound on my finger there from getting burned, it does make it a little bit hard to to grasp it but again I don't think it has anything to do with the, the knife it has more to do with my hand being beat up so let's just see if we can get some feathers started here all right so I'm gonna do a little carving here the last piece of wood was a little bit, a little bit um, alive still, so it made the, even the feather, feather stick process a little bit more difficult. But just to show you, you know, if you had to carve a notch out for making a pot hanger or maybe some sort of trap, and be careful because I just barely bumped my thumb there, and this thing is coming to me very, very sharp. But yeah, I mean I'm halfway through, no problem right here. Then if you want to get in a little bit more detail with that toward the top of the blade. So just a quick look right there. I mean, that's that's doing the job quite nicely as you, you know, start making something for, like I said, a trap, pot holder, whatever it might be. All right, we're back here talking about the Silent Hero 4. Let me give you some thoughts on this knife. First off, back to a question I asked at the beginning of this video, is this a survival knife? You certainly could use it as a survival knife. I would generally call this a belt knife, an outdoors knife, a camping knife, maybe a hunting knife. Um, but survival knife, it generally has to be longer for me. It's got five to seven inches, I would say, for your average survival knife. I think that's kind of the, the preference for a lot of people and certainly myself as well. But I really like this knife a lot. Like I said, probably my favorite knife of all time, the SERB3, and this has a lot of similar features. I will say that the handle I find more comfortable than the original Silent Hero. It is still smaller than I would expect to be, you know, really comfortable for me, but I'm telling you, though it's thinner, it's thin this way, it still is very comfortable for me to hold and for me to use. So having tested it out, um, you know, on and off camera, I think it's definitely a win for a knife. Um, 1095, some people are like, what about a S30V, S35V, like, that's just not generally Top's thing. They, they do a most, the vast majority of their knives, they're gonna do in 1095, some 440, but 1095, higher carbon steel. So if that's not your jam, you're probably not looking at a ton of Top's knives anyhow. But um, their heat treat is awesome. Their knives are super durable. They stand behind their knives. The sheath, great. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Scout carry. It's just not my preference, but this one certainly that works. And because it's not huge, if the handle is really long, Scout carry feels weird because it's kind of all the weight is back here. But this guy, you know, great for Scout carry. If you want to, you could probably even, I haven't done it, but you could probably even twist one of these and just loop it over a belt to hang down. And that would work as, uh, that would work as well. So yeah, I mean, this guy's a win. Price point is about 200 bucks, 210 on their website. You probably get it for a little bit less at some other retailers. Um, it's, that's an investment. That's not no money. It's not dropping 30 bucks on a knife. You definitely have to like this knife to invest in it. Downsides to this knife. Um, I think for some people, the width of the blade, they're not going to be a huge fan of that. 
Um, for me, because I see this as like a camping and outdoors knife in general, yeah, I want to cut and carve and slice rope and stuff, but also like I want to cut through um, pepperoni or, you know, cut some slices of cheese while I'm making a sandwich. So having a wider blade like that certainly works for uh, works for me. Um, the the sheath, I, I like I said, scout style, not my favorite. You can adjust it. Um, I would prefer if they just had like a clip on the back so you could carry it vertically, but that's not a deal breaker for me. And um, I think the overall wins of this knife far outweigh the downsides. Um, the slot for the lanyard, you know, so you can run it basically over your hand like that, or some people kind of rig it up so it's over their thumb sometimes. Um, I like it because it actually gives me a really nice finger guard, like the way my hand locks in there. I'm not pushing against it, but it does protect my finger from slipping over onto the blade. So, yeah, I mean, as you can tell, I think it's a great knife. I mean, this is, for me to say it's up there with the RB3 from SE is saying a lot because that is a favorite knife of mine. Um, I think, you know, a three and a half to four inch blade, give, give or take a little bit, maybe longer, a little bit shorter, um, that, that does a lot for me in the outdoors. Um, I'm able to carry out a lot of tasks. Um, so this is definitely, definitely a major win in my mind from what tops has offered us. So let me hear your thoughts on it. You've seen it in use. Again, I've used it on and off camera, but what do you think about the Silent Hero 4? Color, design, function, all those things. Um, price point, again, I think is going to be a bit much for some people, but it's definitely a buy once, cry once type of situation, I think, with uh, the Silent Hero 4. But let's hear your thoughts and your feedback in the comment section, and let's get that conversation started now.